Hey, what's up guys? You got your boy Nandro here. Welcome to another video. So for this video, as you can see from the deck relay, I'm going to be playing some, a little bit of Reanimator, except I decided to go ahead and put, put a slight spin on how I was going to play it, and I'm, I'm playing Grave Desecration. Now, for those of you who don't know, I actually like Grave Desecration a lot. Uh, for those of you who don't, who don't know what the card does, let's go ahead and uh, take a look. So, Grave Desecration is, at the, end of your at, at the end of your opponent's turn, perform Necromancy for summon a zombie. Zombies are two twos, so essentially, anytime you have four shadows at, at the end of your opponent's turn, you essentially get what, what is more or less a, a, a zombie that you get for free that can, they can you know, use to like make attacks, go face, um, things like that. It just you know, serves, serves like a general, a general annoyance to your opponent. So, one slight thing about the about the reanimate shadow deck for that is that like, you use up so many shadows, so, so many shadows, or sorry, sorry you, you create so many shadows, and, um, but you don't really, like, use them for anything, like, you maybe say use them for Ektar, and you maybe say use them for Aisha, and sometimes Soul Splash, but you don't, like, have any other outlets, and that, to me, didn't feel, like, kind of good, so if I, if I, if I, if I, if I was gonna go ahead and put in, uh, two copies of this, it's not bad for this, right, like, I've had, I've had, uh, I've been, like, enjoying myself while playing this, so that's really cool, um, this is probably similar, well, this is pretty similar to, to like, to the more, like, functional reanimate decks that, that exist right now, not, like, the higher really, like, okay, well, I'm gonna play Poison Daffle, I'm gonna play, like, 8 billion reanimate cards, whatever, and things like that, so, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some of the games I have with this deck, like, I honestly felt like they were pretty fun, like, I actually enjoyed them a lot, like, I'm currently 3 and 2, but I could have, I could have very, very easily, easily been 4 and 1, but, We'll go ahead and talk about. We'll go ahead and talk about them in the games. I'll just gonna show two games, um, maybe three, depending, depending like what happens. But right, so the first game we're reverse dragon. So to be honest with you, most times Shadow usually beats Dragon, unless the Dragon player is like very very good. And the shadow player makes like some very very questionable, questionable like mistakes or whatever. But most times, I do feel like the I do feel like the shadow player is favored. So I kept the Zeus. I kept the Zeus because like I'm playing six I'm playing six different like uh, six different uh, um, burial rate cards. I also have also have a lot of card draws as well. So, so I, can, I, I can find the burial rate card. And like I didn't mind keeping it in the hand because like this hand's like pretty slow like as it is. So like I, I didn't mind that overall. I think I think we get lucky and I pick up a lot of card draw. Like these three cards, like they just like replace themselves pretty quickly. I'm also going second, which is which is really nice. Alright, so here he has blazing breath immediately. So to be honest with you, I had a few options here. Option one, I can go ahead and zombie party. Option two, I can play singer. Uh, and option three, I can play Andre, um, or I, I can like, play the Grave Desecration. I wanted, I wanted to go ahead and try to play the Grave Desecration on the turn where I'll, I know I'll actually go ahead and get a zombie cell, so I just choose to go for Singer. I pick up another Zeus, I'm like, okay, this is fine. Next turn, I can go Andre Evo, but if he plays Galua, I might, I might need to change what I'm doing. Instead, he just passes, I'm like, okay, all right. So here, I'll go ahead and, I'll, go ahead and I'll play Sirius. I like playing Sirius here as opposed to Andre because. I can play the Andre, but I already know that I'm going to be dumping at least these two Zeus's, so realistically, this will this get tagged, this will get tagged, and, that, and that's it, so. so. So I wanted to try to make it so I had like more tags on this before I did it. I also like making the Thiva a lot, yeah, because like he can't kill it, he can't kill it with Sybil, because like, the nerfs matter. So, now we go ahead and we have, we, we have a lot more options, we have more cards than he does, and we're also, we're also going to be guaranteed to draw more cards. And we've not only found the final card to barrel the Zeus, but also found a way to bring it back when we come back in three turns. So we'll go ahead and just bury, and just bury the Zeus right now. You're gonna go ahead and just draw a card, you pick some Aisha, that's great, that's amazing. We now can go ahead and just go face, and play Desecration, and Evolve. Okay, if he doesn't kill any of these, he's trolling, because right, he's gonna take a billion damage. If he does kill one, oh hey, we get a zombie back. The zombie is really nice. We can use it to make plays as well. However, my opponent decides that this is the turn where he wants to play Canyon. Um, I didn't agree with this at all because I, I can I can very easily kill this Canyon and just like go about my business. But he still does it, 
He also doesn't have the hand size for, for Frenzy Drake to come through and, and do and do like some like amazing work. But then I get very very lucky and I top like the Prince Catacomb. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and just catacomb up my board, go ahead and lace it up with catacombs, go face for eight, go face for eight, evolve this, suicide it, kill it, uh, then kill off the, uh, the dragon with the zombie party, and now I'm threatening lethal. Like if he doesn't clear this, okay, well top top deck Ektar kills him. If he does, uh, if he does clear, sorry, if he doesn't clear this, he's just straight just dead. So instead, he plays Sherpa and doesn't Evo. I was really surprised by this not by this, by this decision to not Evo. Like it's really questionable, because like, all right, so you have to you have to hit this. You have to no matter what hit this because of the fact that I have this coming into play. Like because because of that, like if you hit this, it doesn't die. If you hit this, it doesn't matter because this plus this plus this is enough to kill him. But he does it anyway. They're able to take the game. So, yeah. Although again, like I said, he was pretty unfavored overall. Like I don't know. <laughs> the game plan that I have is a lot more is a lot more unfair uh, because it, it attacks from like a lot of different angles as opposed to the game plan like he has. Because the game the game plan that he has is is it, it is board focused, but like. It's not board focused in the good sort of way. So. Right, on to the second game. This game will be versus Swordcraft. So again, versus Swordcraft, and I've been saying this for a while, but versus Swordcraft, like um, Shadow has been like inherently favored versus Swordcraft for, for quite some time. It, it's a little, it's a little bit different now. Now that Sword has like more tools, but like for the most part, you're still inherently favored with some of the archetypes of Sword or uh, versus uh, some of the archetypes of Shadow. So we're going second, so I'll keep the zombie party. Uh, zombie party in the, in the opening while I can keep is actually really important because of Mars. Because you do not want them to go Mars, Mars into double hedgehog because you'll be sad because you, you can't, like it takes you on to hold hedgehog. So pick up a, a second desecration. Generally, the reason why I'm only playing two of these is because I only want to see one per game. Like, when you pick up the second one, the second one becomes like largely dead because you'll never want to play it because of board space issues. Unless you just have that many shadows, but I find that you won't have that many shadows. So again, keeping true to what I said earlier, we go ahead and just temp out the creature. If he wants to kill this, that's fine. Um, because because unless he kills it by trading with it, what I'll do is I'll go ahead <clears throat> is I'll go ahead and develop singer. If he kills singer, I can go ahead and, and just kill the singer with something else, and then go ahead and like paradise banger or something like that. I don't know, but yeah, lots, lots of options. So. To be honest with you, I could have played around Hem uh, Hemera. I chose not to, because um, I didn't know what he was going to get. Although, like to be honest with you, like, uh, I, like I, I always get debated because sometimes there are some days where I see people who do this and they pick up Hemera. Then there are some times where I see people who do this and, and then they pick up Magnus. So I'm not really sure what to make of it when it happens. I just kind of go with it, which might not be correct, but it is what I'm going for. Anyway, I'll go ahead and Evo the Andre. The Andre Evo is decent here because like I have I have three different things that I'll draw cards. This just won't be drawing cards because of the fact that I'll, well it won't be drawing cards on its own because I'll be, I'll be dumping it with uh with one with one of my two burial right cards in the next turn. So here he plays support can I'm like oh what okay I guess strong can. Right. So we pick up a second Zeus and like okay that's awesome. So now what we can go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and definitely definitely play the Great Desecration because that allows us to make a comeback. And we'll go ahead and dump a Zeus, and that'll be, that'll be good. We'll go ahead and get the searcher card. It's kind of nice. I like going for the search first because it's more stats. It's it's also it also appeals better to my mana curve. So here he, play, he plays second chromatic duel. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Into luminous mage. Thankfully, due to the way the working is coded, I don't actually take any damage from this. But he does actually make a board. I can't really deal with it in a good way that I would like to. So. Anyway, here, I get a zombie, I'm like, okay, cool, that's awesome. So now, I, p I pick up my Death Dragon Caller, the, the Death Dragon Caller pickup is, act is actually insane. Here, I'll go ahead and play series. I go ahead and evolve the series. I will not be trading, I'll be going face. When they have, like, once they play the support cannon, you can never make trades ever again. You, you just have to let them, you just have to let them make the trades. Like, 
uh, that's just how it works. Because if you if you get mired if you get mired into, into trading battles, like they, they automatically win because all their commanders essentially all have rush now. So anyway, here he has Vals. I'm like, okay. Uh, I was wondering if he was gonna get the the fatal spell bomb. He, he does in fact get the, the fatal uh, the fatal spell bomb. That's cool. That's fine. Doesn't matter. He evolves the Vals. I like the I like the Vals evolve as opposed to the Hedgehog evolve because like you know you know I want to kill the Hedgehog. Although to be honest with you, it, it all comes back to being about the same thing. Because if I have a if I have a second or I think it's like third zombie party, that becomes huge. Anyway, here I do fuck up a little bit with my with my ordering, which is why you see, which is why we ultimately see me make the make the game plan that, that I choose to go for. So I just go ahead and burial a bunch of cards. Yes, you did just watch him burial right, Nectar. I do I do in fact pick up. Uh, a, a second Death Dragon Collar. So once I pick that up, I, I know now that I have a ton of damage in my hand. So we're about to drop him down to 14, right? We're about to drop him down to 14. This does two each turn because I have, I'm about to produce eight shadows here. Because I'm already at five plus three, that's eight. So divide that by two. That, uh, after I divide that, uh, divide, yeah, divide that by four, would have, that means you get four, uh, two, two shadows, or two, two zombies. Plus this, this will always bring back Zeus. So that's five more damage. So that's, so that's seven each turn across two turns multiplied by two is uh or seven seven per turn multiplied by two is 14. so he's dead because i know his deck is something else the only healing is that is in the exactly front line cavalier so he's making these plays i'm like okay sure he then plays magnus here i'm like okay i take three damage that's fine and i go ahead and get my zombie Alright, so here again we just we just gonna see me slam dunk the Death Dragon Caller to get the Zeus. The Zeus is a lot has a large amount of stats. Now to be honest with you, thinking about it now, I probably should have killed this. I honestly probably should have killed this. Um but I choose not to just because like I wanted to go for, for the for the path of that that gave me the immediate people here. But here he plays Sky Fortress. Now Sky Fortress is really good because as you see here it's about to make a ward in a pinch. Now they play no shots landed landed on my Zeus. That would have been really bad. Because now we see now we see that he has to go ahead and he has to make these make these trades like this. He does get through. He does make he does also make a trade. I didn't actually agree with this trade. I think I would have just traded off the hem the hammer and just like gone and just like preserved the HP on the ward. I, I think that was like honestly better. Anyway. So now, flash forward to my turn, to my current turn. So now, now I have now I have a choice to make. I can't act like, mm, okay. An option I had was to play the Zeus, right? If I play the Zeus, uh, oh sorry, if I play the Death Dragon Caller, I can go ahead and get the Zeus back. I can get the Zeus back. Uh, hit him in the face for two. I have Aisha next turn for lethal, or I can go ahead and and do what I did here, which is go ahead and make a Catacombs board. Now thinking about it now, like making the Catacombs board wasn't really correct. Uh, what I should have done was I should have gone ahead and play Aisha, right? I play Aisha, I play Bellonis, I then also go ahead and play and, and play second copy of Grave Desecration. Because I believe in no no no. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, nah. Uh what what was correct? What we'll, we'll ahead and I, I think I think play, just, just play the dragon collar to get this use here. But I choose to go Aisha. And then go catacombs. But because I didn't kill, but because I didn't kill off the the thing, I'm now putting myself into a bad spot. Like I I, I don't or I don't die to, to anything else except Sky Fortress. Well, it's a combination of both Sky Fortress and then Sky Fortress landing the pings, as well as just him making good trades. So he makes trades here. Then goes space. I get my zombie, but unfortunately the zombie's not good enough by itself. Like I would need to, I would need to have, I would need to top deck Ektar actually. I would need to either top deck Ektar or top deck the other, or top deck another um, another what's it called, um, another zombie party. But like I'm out of the zombie parties, and I get, and I've been, I believe I've been uh, an Ektar earlier. So so we do ultimately see me, ultimately see me like end up losing here. Uh, like I end up losing to him having second Skyforge, which is like completely fair. Well, also. 
just 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 me not like just me not not playing this out. If I played this out, it it, for, it forces him to make a lot more trades than he, than he might want to make overall. And I, then she should probably get then she should probably get enough because like it means he probably can't play the sword here. I'm able to swim, but uh yeah, uh pretty bad beats overall. Anyway. So for the last game, we'll go ahead and show you, and go ahead and show you guys the Stormcraft game. So right now, when you reverse the Stormcraft, nine times out of ten, well, not 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 quite nine times, but like six times out of ten, I would just assume that that you versus Ginger Rune. Uh, Ginger is a pretty scary matchup, but you can beat it. Like, well, it help, it help, definitely helps if you go first. Uh, by the way, but yeah, you can beat it. So again, toss back the Aisha, I'll toss back the Ektar as well. Pick up Goblin. So, I've mentioned this a few times, but like, I really, really don't like Goblin most times. Uh, but I do actually like it in this deck solely because of Grave Desecration and, and the fact that I'm playing Catacombs. So you can like, go ahead and like, make some like, crazy Catacomb setups with, uh, for like, 5 mana, which is like, actually like, really, really cool once you can do that. So, he passes on 1. That, that's a pretty good indicator for us. It means, he's it means they probably is Ginger. Because most times I usually see people play either Insight or Knowledge on 1. He passes on 2. We pass on 2. That confirms it for us. So, we're going to play Singer here. We already have our Desecration in play. The Desecration in play immediately is really good. We pick up a second Ektar. The Ektar is like a little bit not really good because I don't expect to play 2 Ektars in any in any of these games. I'm only really playing Ektar just because Ektar represents a lot of damage in this deck just for just the fact that you, you can always make a keyboard. Like worst case scenario in this deck, Ektar is usually worth like 4 damage. That's not bad. So I'll go ahead and I'll keep I'll keep the, the Andre in my hand. I keep Andre in my hand because I know I know that uh, this game might might go into like extra innings. I want to be able to eat both the Andre so I can pick up some cards. Now here he goes back to Sperry Evolve with the staircase. I was very, very surprised by this. Now he makes a good trade here. If he if he traded into the 2-1, that meant that he was going to die. It meant he was gonna get punished by series, which we did see me pick up here. But that's fine. I, I just kinda evo Andre anyway. And I'll go ahead and drop a zombie party. I'll also go ahead and uh, double bump here, because it's not bad. I pick up Catacombs, I'm like, okay, this is awesome, this is great, this is amazing. Because we see here that I now have the, the prerequisite for Shadows, so I'll get a zombie next turn, which means, like, I guarantee, no matter what, get an automatic two-stack Catacombs, might, might, hell, it might even be a three-stack Catacombs. And this is nice, because we put, we put some pressure on them. So he plays Ethelicia here, he then evolves, but like he, he thinks about this for a while. To be honest with you, the evolve is fine, like, um, but it's also dangerous at the same time. Because, like, Shadow likes to play your dial, like, and you're just, like, playing, you're just playing even harder into dial than you were before. But anyway, we see we see now that I get my two stack catacombs, so I'll go ahead and, and oh, sorry, three stack catacombs, I'm sorry, three stack catacombs, and I'll just go ahead and, uh, zombie party that away. And then we'll go ahead, and I believe we, I believe I choose to evolve the, yep, I choose to evolve the zombie, and just, I drop him down to 8. He's now at 8. He can die. He can die. Uh, to be honest with you, the evolve was sketchy, because of what, because what's about to happen next. Like, I completely forgot the happy pig was a card. So, yeah, so now, so now I give him a perfect evolve condo into the happy pig. That's really, really dangerous for me. Like, I'm really ahead, and he's out of evos. But I really didn't want him to heal because I'm pretty sure I could have killed him if he didn't heal. But anyway, he makes more trades, and this is fine. He goes up to 11. But look at the shadow count. We're back at we're back to four shadows, and look at that. Even though I'm board block, he gave me a way to unboard block myself. So I'll go ahead and just bump here, kill it, then slam the Ektar. The Ektar here is worth is worth nine damage. That's really oh sorry not nine damage six damage that's really good because I'm just kind of dropping down to one and now again look at the shadows with the board that I have even if he, even if, even if he could physically kill each and every card on this board one uh it's all it's laced with exactly one catacomb so he so he so he has the ward two there's also the fact of of I, of I also get the great desecration uh token as well. So, yeah, uh, and he was just like mega dead there. I mean, you know, we just got there. So, yeah. The deck is really fun to play. Uh, the, the other thing I like about it is that, like, as far as, like, reanimate decks go or whatever, it's a little bit cheaper than the, than the well, 
slightly cheaper than some of the other than some, like the other reanimate decks ever because they all because those usually play like three standard win but obviously like i was trying to go a little bit but well i was trying to get slightly more budget with this like obviously uh this does still play xrs which is which which are like a lot i uh aisha as well again also a lot and then like zeus for a total of eight legendaries i think yeah total of eight legendaries so, so it still will cost about like 30 or so but that's, that's not like oh that's not like the worst thing Bam. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like and hit, the, and hit that subscribe button. Let me know what, what you think about uh, Great Desecration Animator uh, down in the comments below. If you like it, if you hate it, if you love it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.